But let's go to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. We'll read from verse 22 to 24. Mark 11, verse 22 to 24. Father, we ask that the eyes of our understanding is open tonight. We see the reality of your word for us and we walk in the glory of the man in Christ to the honor of your majesty. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Mark 11, verse 22 to 24. And Jesus answering, saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, And shall not doubt in his heart, But shall believe that those things which he saith Shall come to pass, He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Hallelujah. Are you here? All right, now look at it. It says, have faith in God. And some theologians say the better way to render that faith is have the faith of God. I don't know. Whichever one you take is fine. Have the faith of God. Now, in our previous, in one of our previous lessons, we looked at how God... Now, I'm not in any way insinuating that God uses faith. However, he demonstrated what we call faith. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so now, in God creating the world, what did he do? He spoke them into reality. The Bible says, he called the things that be not as though they were. Romans 4, verse 17. He called the things that be not as though they were. So, it's, it, nothing is there. Nothing. You know, a state of nothing. I don't know how to define a state of nothing. You see, but a state in which nothing is there. Nothing. And God began to call things forth. He began to call things forth. See, giving name to something that is non-existent. Are you following what I'm saying now? He's calling things that are not existent by name. So he says, he says, um, light, be. You see, in that, there was no light. But he says, light, be. You see, there was no green vegetation. He says, let green vegetation appear. And they sprang up, you see. Meaning that, you see, God can, by his word, give effect to things. And that's what we call faith today. That's, that, that's the understanding we have from scriptures. So the Bible says, have the faith of God. The God kind of faith. Now, how does God use his faith? That is what Jesus is explaining here. How does God demonstrate this? He says, the way you will do it is to say, for very, he says, whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Now, pay attention. Who is this whosoever? So let's imagine that that is you. Whosoever. It can be anybody. He says, whosoever. Whosoever. So that can be you, that can be me. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Now, pay attention. So there is the you, and there is a mountain that is opposing you. Is that correct? Eh? There is you, and there is a mountain that is opposing you. Now, but what do you do to, to affect the mountain? What do you have to do to cause changes to the mountain? He says, say. You see, look at it. He says, whosoever shall say, Unto this mountain, you will say, Unto this mountain. Now, notice he didn't say, You will say unto God. Are you following what I'm saying? He says, You will say to this mountain. Then he says, Be moved, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. Can you see specificity of the, of the instruction? The instruction is so specific. He says, O mountain, be moved and be cast into the sea. Meaning that when you are exercising the God kind of faith, you are going to say, right? So there is speaking involved. When you are exercising the God kind of faith, there is speaking involved. And in that speaking, that's number one, there is speaking involved. Number two, the speaking has to be specific. The speaking has to be specific. You cannot speak in generic terms. You see? 
you, can, you should not be speaking generically. You should be able to pinpointedly direct your words into this, the specific situation you would like to change. So you have to be specific. And then it says, and shall not doubt in his heart. That's number three. You shall not doubt in your heart. There is no reason, no reason in this life why you should think that what you have said will not come to pass. Do you have moments like that? When you just feel like maybe God will not do it. Huh? Maybe God will not do it. Maybe I don't deserve it. Maybe I need to go and work for it. Maybe I need to double my efforts. Maybe I have to borrow it. You see that now? He said, but you shall not doubt. You are not considering, you are not wavering between opinion, whether God will do it or he will not do it. Do you see the point? To doubt is to waver between opinions. And it can be caused by anything. You know, it can be that you are overwhelmed by the desire. It can also be that you don't have confidence in God. You see that now? You don't have confidence in God. So you are overwhelmed. And then you become, you become overwhelmed by that desire. That you are not able to, you know, devote your mind to trust the Lord. Look at it. So he says, you shall not doubt. You shall not doubt. So the third thing, you cannot doubt. You cannot doubt. The Bible says, he that doubts, is like the wave of the sea that is tossed. He says, let that man not think he shall receive anything of the Lord. In other words, if you doubt, nothing is coming your way. Even if you have desire, even if you say, nothing will come, because he who doubts is like the wave of the sea who, will not, who should not expect anything from the Lord. Are you following what I'm saying now? Okay, now. So let's. So you shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. Now, <laughs> the work of faith is believing. See, when you put your faith to work, how do we know that faith is active? By believing. By your believing. Now, what does it mean to believe? What does it mean to believe? You know, um, if you look at it grammatically, if you just look at it grammatically, okay? Um, um, believe is the verb of faith. So faith is a noun. You know, it's just like when you say um, faith in itself is a concept, right? And then, you know, just, I, I want to use this loosely, okay? Because I believe that the person who wrote it did not intend for it to be a definition. But look at it. Hebrews chapter, one, chapter 11 verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, it's describing the concept, faith. So, so the principle, the name of the principle is faith. And faith, in fact, if you would define faith, the, the easiest way to define it is to say confidence in God. Now, in the context of the Christian faith, it is confidence in God or to trust in God or to trust God. So you don't need a complex definition for it. That is, you repose your confidence in God. That's what it means to have faith. Now, how will I know that you have faith? That is what belief will show. So, belief, which is also a, a family, a, you know, from the same family of words, to faith, simply adds action to it. 
Do you see that now? Now, faith is you have confidence in God. Now, how will anyone know that you have confidence in God? Okay, can you see now? The things you do will show that you have confidence in God. For instance, he says, you will, if you have the faith of God, you will say. So if there is faith present in your heart, what will you do? You will say. Do you see that now? Now, so the saying is an act of believing. Uh, 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 do you understand this now? Your saying is what? An act of believing. Now, imagine that God says to you, uh, Son, um, I want you to get off bed, get off your bed, and go to the bus stop. When you arrive there, I will tell you what next to do. Now, ordinarily speaking, if that kind of thought, you know, when God, God is not usually very dramatic. Sometimes things can come to you dramatically, you know, and sensationally, but, or spectacularly. But many, many times, most of the time, they don't come spectacularly. They will come as just random thoughts. Okay, now, if that kind of thought crosses your mind, what will be your first reaction? Eh? Eh? A D. A D. A D. <laughs> like a spell. <laughs> like somebody cast a spell on you. Why will you go to the bus stop? <laughs> Why will you go to the bus stop? Or you can think that your mind is playing a fast one on you. Now, your mind can play with it in, in different ways, right? Now, but if there is faith in your heart, how will you demonstrate it? You will go nonetheless, right? Your mind cannot conceive, can you not just comprehend what God has said, but because you trust in him, what do you do? You get up and you go there. Do you see that now? You go there. You see. You see, there was a sister years ago. Um, I did not believe that I was in the best spiritual state. Now, you, I hope you understand what I'm saying. I, was, I did not think I was in the best spiritual state. But when I saw this sister, a neighbor of mine, she was, all of a sudden, could not walk. She could not walk all of a sudden. And I, so I was coming back from work. Can you imagine? I've had a long day. I was coming back from work. I entered into the compound. And I saw her. She could not walk. And I asked her, ah, sister, what's wrong with you? What happened? She now, she was trying to tell me the story. Something happened and she cannot walk again. And she's gone to hospitals everywhere. And they don't know what is wrong with her. Ah, he said they have even prayed. But now they told her to go back to her village. You know, when people tell you to go back to the village, you know what it means? That you should go and seek traditional help. I said, ah, I said, but sister, you are, you are a Christian. Why would you want to do that? I said, do you believe? Do you believe that if we pray, God can do it? She said, yeah, yeah I believe, I believe, I believe. I said, okay, let us pray. Uh, honestly, if I did not walk with the spur of that moment, in my own senses, I would not have done that. Do you understand what I'm saying? I would have prayed it in my mind. Wait, when last was the last time I prayed for something specific and I got it? <laughs> now, I'll start playing in my head. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'll start playing with it. Ah, what if I, what if I pray and it does not happen? I will embarrass myself. <laughs> Do you, does it happen to you like that? Like, I will embarrass, this, this was many years ago. I, like, I will embarrass myself. So, I, you know, I did not, my mind did not work that way at that moment. Why? Yeah? Because faith was stirred up in my heart. It was really stirred up. And I acted it out by asking her to let us pray. And we prayed. I don't even remember what I said. We prayed. And I said, don't worry, it's fine. I, honestly, I did not even try. You know, J Jesus will lift you up and say, get up. You know? I did, he did not cross my mind to say that. I just prayed and I left. Now, that will show you the state of my mind. That I was not expecting her to walk 
instantly. Do you follow what I'm saying? So even my use of faith was very limited. So I just prayed and I left. I don't remember how many days after, whether it was the next day or some days after. I was coming back from work this, at this day also. And I saw this lady, she went to the well. Whenever there was no um, light, we would go to the well to fetch water. And she went to the well to fetch water by herself. Now, it didn't occur to me quickly that she walked down there. It was, I now walked past her and I, like, and I now realized that ah, that lady is walking. So I went, I said, oh, you're not walking. You know, there was joy in my heart, of course. They're like, man, the prayer worked. So now I'm the one that is stunned. Like, eh, the prayer worked too. <laughs> because it's been a long time I experienced something like that. You know, so I said I was not in the best spiritual state at that point in time. So you see that. So when you give effect to the confidence that you have in God, what do we say? You believe. Now, so here, go back there now. Verse 23. So he says, Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe. You see that now? But shall believe. But shall believe. What would he believe? The things that you say it shall come to pass. You believe that the things that you say shall come to pass. So the question is, do you believe that what you are saying? You know, the saying is the, use, is the proof of your faith. If you are not saying anything, your faith has no proof. You say, I have faith. That's why James says, show me your faith by what you do. And sometimes, the things you want to do does not require an action. So, in those cases, it is your speaking that counts as the action. Do you see that now? And that's why I encourage you to make confessions. Do you see that now? Make confessions. And that's why I say, when you come to church, be, let your mouth be loosed. Speak. You see that now? Let your mouth be loosed. Your tongue be loosed. Speak. Don't keep quiet. You are not meant to be quiet. Because in exercising your faith, speaking is what? Involved. You cannot exercise your faith without speaking. So you believe in your heart that the things that you are saying will come to pass. Look at it. Look at the conclusion. It says, he shall have. He shall have whatsoever he says. Do you see that now? So, number one, you have faith in God, right? So if you have faith, how do you, now, how do you demonstrate it? Number one, you will say, right? You will say, Number two, you will be specific in your speaking. Say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Number three, you shall not doubt in your heart. That is, you will not be wavering between opinions. Do you see that now? You will not be wavering between opinions. Oh, God can do it. Yes, he can. But is he willing to do it? I'm not sure. Mm -mm. You cannot waver between opinions. That's number three. Number four, you will believe. What will you believe? That what you are saying will come to pass. And what will happen? You shall have what you say. Do you see that now? So, if you would exercise your faith, how will you go about it? You must be speaking. You must be specific in your speaking. And you must not allow doubt in your heart. Do you see that now? You must not allow doubt in your heart. You must not allow doubt in your heart. You must believe that those things you are saying shall come to you. see that now? You speaking to the mountain is what? Prayer. You speaking to the mountain is prayer. What things soever you desire. He says, when you pray. 
Meaning that you're speaking to the mountain is prayer. You're speaking to the mountain is prayer. God understands it. He honors it. Hallelujah. So I will use my faith. I will use my faith. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot just allow yourself to wallow in the pain of not having your desires. You cannot, you cannot descend into self-pity. <laughs> or is it God you will pity? Say, uh, well, you know, you say God can never be wrong. I, I don't want to seem like, uh, you know, you not be giving excuses why something is not working. No. Our God is not like that. We don't need to defend him. His name is too big for him to need us to defend him. But you must be rugged and stay with your confession. He says, whatever you say, you will have. Whatever you say, you will have. Whatever you say, you will what? 